Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Monday morning downtown slow response and recovery call. Today is March 1st, which is hard to believe, but it is also true. Um, so welcome to March and welcome to this week. My name is Bettina Swigger and I'm the CEO of Downtown Slow. If this is your first time joining us, these weekly calls are a chance for us to talk about all the issues facing downtown. Um, we have different representatives from different organizations, including our uh, municipal government agencies. And we've got a really packed agenda for you today. So I'm excited to share some great speakers and some really great content. Um, if you're viewing this on Facebook, uh, hello to you. And if you are viewing this uh, from a recording, I hope that um, it, life has been as good as it is right now in this moment um, in the interim. So um, walking through what's going on this week, uh, the Mission Plaza is being highlighted and changed as being refreshed rather for March. Um, as I speak, uh, the, a team of event professionals is over changing the Tunnel of Local Love to the Slow Lucky Tunnel of Gratitude. Um, many thanks to our partners, um, the City of Slow, for um, putting funding into this expanded program and to the brilliant event masterminds at Carson Butler Events for this really fun refresh. Um, go over and see the progress will be going on through the day. Um, and we have a new project, which is um, a little bit more profound, but led by a volunteer. There is a national day of mourning today on March 1st, um, honoring all of those who we have lost to COVID-19 during this terrible pandemic. And um, one of our local florists, Katie Noonan, has volunteered her services to create a floral heart. Um, I just snapped this picture five minutes ago in Mission Plaza. She was, um, she's installing these roses onto the heart. You can't quite see it right now because it's still in progress, but um, there are hundreds of roses that will be going into this floral heart. It will be placed where the, our holiday tree was in front of the mission um, and uh, we will be, um, it will be in place as long as the roses last. So um, I invite you to come out and check this out. Um, if you have any memories you'd like to share about people that you have lost to the disease, um, this is a really, really lovely um, and, and sad volunteer-led floral project that is national. So um, look for that coming up in Mission Plaza as well. So um, our Downtown Slow is a nonprofit organization. We have a 501c6 arm, um, which is where most of our business is conducted. And we also have a 501c3, the Friends of Downtown Slow. Um, we are led by a board of directors as well as liaisons to our county and city government. And um, we are currently going through an election. So you should get a reminder in your email if you are a member of Downtown Slow. Um, the, mem the email will come from Election Buddy. That is the software program that we're using for our election. We have five candidates who will be running to join the existing board of directors. We also have five slots. So we realize that this is not necessarily a competitive election. Um, but we're really grateful to those who are stepping up and volunteering to serve their downtown in this capacity. We have three um, candidates who are running for re-election, Mark, Fareed, and Stephanie. And we have one um, candidate who is running for election who served on the board many times before, Stephen Patrick. And a new candidate is Jessica Russo from Flower House. So we're looking forward to having these people join and we, look, we encourage you to vote in your election. Very excited to announce that we have shared free gloves, which were donated to us from Trust, Trust Automation. Um, we received 161 boxes of vinyl gloves and we've been distributing them throughout downtown. Um, we've, we've distributed over a thousand so far to 60 businesses. So if you are interested in getting some of these gloves, we would love to get the box out of our office slash warehouse and put them onto your employees' hands so that you can keep your customers safe. Um, email Cassidy at downtownslow.com or fill out the form that she's going to put into the chat right now. And with that, March, uh, with that, Rachel, <laughs> sorry. Hi, Rachel. How are you this morning? <laughs> Wonderful. Take it away. Uh, thanks. Yes. So our snapshot as of Friday, uh, 19,643 cases of COVID-19 have been reported in Slow County, with the city of Slow accounting for 3,684 of those cases. Our active cases are at 601, and unfortunately, the total number of deaths due to COVID-19 does continue to increase 
um, with the loss of 10 more lives over this last week, bringing the total number to 227. Our condolences go out to their families and friends. Um, and yeah, what a special um, thing going on in Mission Plaza with the flowers to um, remember those who we've lost during this really tough time. Testing is available and encouraged um, to help us move into the red tier. Um, the city put out some messaging over the weekend as well as the county. Uh, so I'll drop that release in the chat. And we do currently still remain in the widespread or purple tier. On the next slide, we have two upcoming ad hoc committee meetings. The first is the Food, Beverage, and Services Committee on March 9th at 11 a.m. via Zoom. And we'll be talking about St. Patrick's Day. The second is parking and access on March 11th at 10 a.m. via Zoom. And we'll be discussing upcoming projects such as the proposal for mobile app payments, uh, downtown paving project, as well as a little bit of a round table. If anyone would like to join those calls, please email me at rachel at downtownslo.com. With that, Bettina, I'll turn it back over to you. Great, thank you, Rachel. And just as a reminder for our members, we have suspended our regular committee operations and are really looking at these meetings every week happening as a replacement for those. But as special topics arise that we need to really convene a special group for, we will be having these meetings. So um, we look forward to gathering the bars and restaurants for the food beverage services and then anybody who's interested in parking, which is probably all of you, I'm guessing. Um, but if you have this particular passion for it, you're welcome to join us on March 11th. So thanks for that. Um, a little bit more about some of the federal relief that is coming down. You are probably aware that the 1.9 trillion federal aid package did get approved by the House last week and the Senate is expected to vote today. Um, that package has changed quite a bit in the last week. There are some things that have been uh, removed and some, some things that maybe are gonna come back. There will be some issues that will be addressed during the reconciliation as well. But this aid package does include $350 billion to state and local governments, which will be very helpful, um, as well as additional stimulus payments to individuals. Uh, hopefully that's still unknown. Um, and then most importantly, expanded unemployment benefits. So um, that's really critical as those um, benefits could have expired um, yesterday since it's now a new month. Um, I said there would be more this week and I'm gonna say the same thing now. There will be more coming on this next week, hopefully. The state of California, um, the big news that just came out about 15 minutes ago was that uh, Governor Newsom announced a new plan to bring kids back to school by April 1st. And I suspect that we will hear more about that from Supervisor Ortiz Leg um, on the county's reaction to that. And I know there's some information about vaccinations that will be helpful for that. Um, but there is stimulus funding coming down from the state, which will include $600 payments to low-income Californians. Um, it also includes a, a real investment in that business grant program. And last week, we talked a little bit about the fact that many of, the, of us on the call, including our organization, applied for the first round of those business grants, were put onto a wait list. Um, we're now in a position where they may have more funding coming out. So my understanding at this point in time is that you do not need to apply again if you have previously applied for those funds. Um, they will just be pushing more funding into the program and be notifying businesses as the, the time goes on. Um, there's also some intricate California tax law issues that I encourage you to look into with your CPA and um, it, but, but it will have an implication for um, your business if you took out a PPP or an idle. Um, and the good news is that there will be two years of fee relief if you work in a business that has um, a license requirement. So if you own um, a restaurant that has an ABC rice license, um, or if you work in a salon and you're required to get a um, barbering and cosmetology license, that will, um, that fee will be eliminated for two years. So that's really good news. Um, and that's what I've got from the state. And now I look forward to welcoming our supervisor for District 3, Don Ortiz Leg. Thanks for being with us this morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just love that um, day of mourning and, and effort of people to do take the time. It's really really amazing. I mean, I think the downtown is doing a great job and, and also the, the lucky tunnel. Um, so I 
I salute them for that. I'm going to share with you some of the information regarding COVID, which you probably really know. Nothing that much has changed, but we are about 24 hours away of determining whether or not we can um, go into the red tier. But if you just wanna go through the slides quickly, I'll show what we have here. Um, yep, we're still here in this phase 1B. What's interesting about it is that we've expanded what that means actually. Um, while we have the adults 65 and plus, we also now have the 10% of teachers. I did talk to some teachers that week that did get called up, so that's good. I think um, I'll be interested to hear what the governor has come up with this morning. Um, I don't know anything more than you do at this point. And matter of fact, I didn't even know that much, Bettina. So I'm just really hopeful that that the powers that be recognize how important it is for us to get our kids back to school because it not only impacts the children and their health, the teachers to get them um, immunized, but also the fact how much it is on our businesses. You know, people are having a hard time uh, doing <laughs> two or three things at once, including educating their children. So um, I'll be interested in, and hopefully we'll have some uh, releases this afternoon on if there's any changes within us. But right now we are doing the 10% and we are also making plans with the farm workers and of course the, um, the special folks that are in police and public safety. Yeah, so we're still here on the 65. If we, if we, you'll see this um, vaccinating next, the special critical infrastructure workers, I guess that's kind of, you know, these percentages that are coming out. Next slide, please. Um, so this is something new from last week, and this is the county lottery system. So one of the things that was happening is that people are calling in and they can't get through or they can't um, seem to utilize the, the online system. So right now we have a system that says it's um, you only have to register once and that'll be less competition to try to get in on that Thursday morning process that was going on. Um, your sign up will remain in the system until you are selected and also the trail phone registration number will still be available for those who are not um, computer savvy or don't have access really. Next slide please. So um, we had what I talked about just now, the 10% allocated to K-12. In the next few weeks, we'll have the higher ed folks coming in for theirs, and it'll be um, distributed to those institutions, Cal Poly and Cuesta. That's the way that we understood it at this point. And then, as I mentioned, the public safety offers and the farm workers are also planned. Yeah, so if we make the grade and get to the red tier tomorrow. Well, we'll find out tomorrow at noon. It probably wouldn't start until Wednesday, I guess, but that would mean that it would be 25% capacity indoor dining. Um, bars would remain closed, however. Um, wineries and tasting rooms may be open with modifications. Gyms can open at 10%. That's still really low particularly on the type of gym it is. I mean, that's, I know I've heard from folks and I think that it's really hard to put that one size fits all on that. Um, retail capacity increased to 50%. Uh, Slow County school districts are all working on plans for reopening. And so you have to check with your local district. And then the youth sports came back last week um, with an informed consent and a couple of other rules. Next slide, please. Yeah, let's just open it up for questions. Um, thank you for letting me present things you probably may or may not know. Um, and then I can also talk quickly about what's on our agenda tomorrow at the Board of Supervisors. I'll leave it up to you in charge here, Bettina. Great, well, thank you so much. Um, one thing that I am curious about, and you didn't prepare slides for this, so uh, apologies for putting you on the spot. Um, I'm curious if you have any update on the mortgage uh, rent relief program. Yes. So tomorrow on the board, we have um, that approval to, to work with the state on the 17 million that was allotted for us. Again, um, the way that that works is that Capslow, Five Cities um, Homeless Coalition, and then I believe um, United Way are all participants in that program. It will, the checks will come from the state, but those agencies will be here locally to help folks. And the way it is, is that 80% of the rent will be paid if the landlord participates in it. That means that they would have to figure out the other 20%, but through the state program, up to 80% is paid if the landlord applies. If the tenant applies, then they get a 20% um, um, payment towards their 
rent that is owed. So it's really important to get the landlords involved. And we have to approve it tomorrow on the board. And then I don't think that the actual system and payments would come up until middle, I think it's March 16th, Bettina and folks. Okay. Okay, that's audience. helpful. So if yep. you, let's say um, I am somebody who has uh, lost a significant chunk of my income because my business has been closed. Um, would I have to sign up with an agency like Capslow or Haslow in order to get the relief? Or could I just advocate directly to my landlord? I think you should, I think you would talk to your landlord. What we're getting feedback from is that there has been good communication between tenants and their landlords. I would recommend doing it with your landlord, talking to them about it. The system, how it's going to be, will be that it will actually be through the state of California, where the local um, piece of it comes in is more of a support system, and the details on that are still to be determined. Um, yeah, so I don't have enough information for you to share on that. That's, that's okay. Um, we'll just keep the conversation going. I know it's evolving right. every day. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, I'm, I'd be interested in hearing from anybody who's, you know, having issues. I mean, you you hear stories happening in, um, on the on the media in regards to people who were told that they didn't have to pay, and then all of a sudden they they have a um, an eviction notice on their front door. So we need to hear about these about these kinds of incidences if they are happening, or what we've heard from the realtor um, and the landlord associations is that actually people have been working together with their tenants and their landlords. So which is good news. Um, I. Do you have anything else before I move on? And I'll be quick because I know you have a full agenda. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, also tomorrow, we, we did come up with a little bit of an economic package from the county. Because we have so many federal funds as well as state funds coming in, um, and because most of our CARES money at the county is going towards the, the health response, um, we were able to um, determine for a $230,000 package to be helping small businesses. We've got a $50,000 um, small micro grant program that will be worked through the Workforce Development Board. Um, some of that will be dedicated to the businesses in the unincorporated areas since they have not been able to participate in city chambers or if they're not in the city limits of the various cities in the county. So that's initially we'll be looking at the those businesses if they're in the unincorporated, but other ones um, are also welcome to participate in those micro grants through the Workforce Development Board. Again, this has to be approved tomorrow. Um, $50,000 will be going to the um, County Department of Education, their early childhood centers to help families with some of the child care um, support there. And then we will be doing um, an outreach, an economic package marketing outreach um, for the county, driving people to the Ready Slow website. So I'm hoping that will get done and that will be. Um, That'll be something that, again, educating and for making sure that people have access to the information that they need to get the relief, economic relief that they need. So there'll be, once that all gets approved, then we can go to work and get that. And so when people have questions, they won't have to be on a call. They can just go to the Ready Slow economic portion and that information will be available to them. The other item tomorrow that's really big for, I think everybody really, it's a, um, a water, a state water amendment. And what that means is that, um, the state has now allowed us to be able to say for all the water that we don't use, that we would have the ability to sell or resell. Those are the people that have the contracts with the state water. And that is really important for, let's say, growers in the Edna Valley. And so that gives us a little bit more flexibility to utilize our water resource. And so um, this is a first time thing in about 40 years that that state water has come through or perhaps even longer than that. But at any rate, um, this is a flexibility tool. So they call it a water management tool. And I'm hoping that we get approval at the board because again, any time that we can be in control of our water resources and utilize them to the best advantage for our county here, the better. And that's all I have right now. And I thank you for the time. Great, well, thank you for being here. This is really interesting. Um, I, I'm super excited to hear about that water conversation because that is definitely something that's on our minds. Um, I do right. have one more question for you before we let you go. Um, I'm wondering if you at the county organizational level have any plans with all of the vaccinations to bring some of your workers back into the downtown core. Um, I know for a while last month when you and I talked, the county building was kind of empty 
how does it feel these days with with employees? Yeah, employees? it's a good question, and it's one that I will pose. Um, we just lost our little sandwich shop in the county building last week. It took us all by surprise. <gasps> what? Um, yes, and so there was a note on the door. I was heading down there. I. I, I'm hoping that we bring people back into the office um, and I'm hoping that we can find some help there for um, the little sub shop. Um, I can't think of the name of it right now. Captain um, Bills. Thank you. I love that place. And so I'm, I'm sorry to say that that um, just closed up. So yeah, it's an important question that you've asked, Bettina. As usual, <laughs> you've got great questions. And um, again, I, I, I'll be back next week with, with some more information on that. And, I get, and you see our contact here. So if there's any other questions, please reach out to us. Thank you so much. Okay, Have a great thank week. you. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, up next, we have a new guest from Cal Poly. Uh, welcome, Joy Peterson. Thanks for being with us today, Joy. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm Dr. Joy Peterson. I'm the Dean of Students uh, at Cal Poly. And I asked Courtney uh, Kino if I could come here today because I love um, working with town gown relations. I am a longtime resident of San Luis Obispo. I've been at Cal Poly for 17 years and um, I was born and raised here. So it's really nice to be with all of you and to be able to give an update on some of the things that are going on at Cal Poly. And I'm happy to answer questions. Um, I just have a few brief updates. We will be um, heading into finals week, March 15th through the 19th, and our spring break will be March 20th to 28th. Um, for those of you who keep track of the academic calendar, um, that will put St. Patrick's Day um, in the middle of finals week. And so we, we think that will be um, a time when students are hopefully more focused on academics. Uh, but we are keeping an, our, our eye on March 31st, which is Cesar Chavez Day and is also an academic holiday. Um, as the weather gets nicer, we're seeing more students gathering and we're working really hard to continue our communications around social distancing, mask wearing, and um, those non-pharmaceutical interventions. Uh, our spring commencement, we just announced, will be uh, completely virtual, and we are hoping to do something in person for the graduates that would be small and social distanced, but that will all depend on where we are as a county um, and our, our vaccination um, rollout schedule. Uh, for those of you who follow the ASI elections, our uh, students have submitted all of their paperwork and applications and we will be heading into election season. The ASI board and president are typically announced um, the mid to end of April. And one of the big things that's happening on campus right now is the transition to saliva testing. So all of our students are now able to complete their COVID tests um, via the saliva testing, which is much more convenient for them and less intrusive than the nasal swab testing that we've been doing. Um, an added benefit is that it's in-house and we have a quicker turnaround and more control um, when we're able to produce a higher volume of tests. And um, my last update is around fall planning. Um, just so everyone is aware, we are planning to offer the majority of our classes in person in the fall. Um, we'll be bringing students back to live on campus and uh, faculty are submitting their fall courses uh, this week. So we'll have a better idea of what's being offered um, in person. And that concludes my update. Great. Well, thank you for being with us. Um, we appreciate it. Um, with your plans to bring students back to campus in the fall, um, will that be still under the limited, um, like putting everyone in singles on campus, or will you be going back to the, the quote, old way of doing things? Um, no, we're not quite ready to go back to the old way. Um, we will continue to utilize a lot of the practices that we do now. Um, we are, are scheduling students right now in doubles. So we're, we're predicting the students will be in doubles. Um, that could change, but it's easier for us to plan for things in person and then scale back than to um, try to quickly scale up to transitioning back to in person. So right now we plan on having students in doubles in housing. Um, we will continue to social distance and have um, students wearing masks and washing hands and all of those other things. 
Great. Well, thanks for being with us. We appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Um, up next, we've got an update on the um, downtown paving project, which you've heard a little bit about already. And I think, is Jennifer on this call? Jennifer? No. Okay, we are just reminding you that the downtown paving project is having another meeting on March 6th. There was a meeting on Thursday night as well. Um, I was unable to attend, but I'm hoping that maybe um, our friend Lee Johnson at the city can tell us about that. So Lee, how are you today? Uh, good, Bettina. Um, can you uh, hear me and see me okay? Yes. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so on the, the paving project, I mean, they had the first one last Thursday. And there's one Saturday on the 6th at 11 a.m. You can also go to www.slowcity.org slash downtown paving project and see um, either watch the videos from the meetings or provide your feedback and see the project. So everything's there. I encourage people to do that because it will be a relatively big project downtown. Um, then on uh, Tuesday night, tomorrow night at council, there's the Dana Street. Uh, parking program and parking district that they're looking at. So that will be on the agenda tomorrow night. And then the only other thing I have is, I think we're all knocking on wood and hoping and doing all the things we can that tomorrow we get good numbers and that we can go into the red tier on Wednesday. Um, just so everyone knows, we have to stay in that tier for three weeks. Um, even if our numbers are good enough tomorrow, let's say to get us um, into orange, I don't think they will be, but if they were, we'd still have to wait three weeks. So I'll have to keep watching the numbers, see what happens, but it'll be good news if we get to go to red. Otherwise, that's it for me today. Thank you so much, Lee. Appreciate you. And um, I, I, uh, we're all crossing our fingers for the red tier, that's for sure. So tomorrow at noon is the time to, to tune in. Ish. <laughs> Ish. Thank, Thank you. you. Sometimes it's a lot of refreshes between 11.45 and 12.15. Yes, yes I, I too have the sore finger from hitting the refresh button. Um, yes. All right, up next we've got uh, Jim D'Antona from the Slow Chamber of Commerce. How are you this morning, Jim? Doing great, Katina. Thanks uh, for having us. Good to be here. Uh, just to start, wanted to start out real quick and let folks know that tomorrow, or not, not tomorrow, um, on <laughs> the... Uh, or, oh, now I'm lost. Um, what day are we on? <laughs> yeah, so uh, March 4th, <laughs> I had it right. Um, it's our Think Differently uh, virtual event playbook. It's in part, the City of Slow uh, Promotional Coordinating Committee is having us pull together uh, this uh, program for people to look at putting together their virtual events. Um, we're pulling some of the genius out of Cal Poly, mind body and sharing what we do so that, you know, you can run your uh, events better. It's a free event put on by the city. So uh, feel free to sign up and register. Uh, it should be an incredible, um, valuable event. Uh, the last one we did, part one was incredibly uh, effective tool and people got a lot of information out of it on how to do this uh, better. And I'll be honest from, Doing this in, since March, uh, our team has gotten to do it a bunch of different ways and uh, we've gotten pretty good at this. So uh, we'd love to have you join us on that one. Um, next up, uh, we also have um, obviously the Buy Local Bonus Program is still going on. Um, so highlight that if you uh, were looking for businesses and customers to participate. Uh, so you can follow all the normal steps to that we've been showing here or highlight on your um, Instagram social media pages uh, for your customers to come and utilize that for you uh, and then get uh, additional bonuses for themselves. And uh, finally, as we were talking about before, um, we do all of these events and we know that there's a million things going on. You might not be able to uh, get to them all and we do have our event recordings page that you can literally go over and click through uh, and find programs that you missed uh, that you weren't able to catch uh, the first time uh, like uh, maybe part one of uh, the think differently virtual events which had some fabulous folks like Amber Carson's talking um, so 
we'd encourage you to go over there, check it out, and see if there's anything there that uh, you missed that you can just program up on. So that's all we have for today. Great, thanks, Jim. Um, I'm curious if you can give us an update on the biolocal bonus about how much money is left in that program. Um, oh, that's uh, that's actually a harder, uh, just because we're constantly uh, updating um, how many cards we have and uh, but. Um, Right now, we've put a hundred thousand, about a hundred thousand dollars into the program uh, for buying gift cards from our local businesses. Um, so it's been pretty amazing in terms of the response. Obviously, businesses are super thankful for it. It turned out right, and uh, we've had two thousand one hundred and fifty-eight shoppers sending in their receipts some very which we really appreciate are on one receipt with over a hundred dollars of purchases and others are 12 receipts with eight dollars of purchases on it but either way um it is awesome uh to see the, you know the amount that has come in the average spend actually on all of these uh is 173 dollars and we've gotten you know about three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in receipts come in so it's been really awesome to see this um, happening and you know, people are spending the money here and we're just glad to get it uh, from, from the city into the hands of the businesses. The city's been amazing in doing this program and uh, we're working, you know, we're building the plane <laughs> as we're flying it. And it's, uh, I think we finally got it down to a, a smooth process too, so for, for everyone. Um, so there's still some room though uh, for businesses if you haven't uh, picked up on uh, being a part of this. Right. And is there a limit to how many times you can qualify as a shopper? It's yeah. Up to three times. Three. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Three times. Great. So I know I qualified twice, but it's time for me to submit my receipts again. I'll try to buy one place just to make your <laughs> jobs easier. We really appreciate when you're doing mm -hmm. one, but if you have to do it over 10, we get it. Yeah. I think I need a new pair of jeans. So <laughs> we'll, we'll work on that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks, Jim. Gina. Appreciate, appreciate you. Um, all right, we have a special guest with us today. Um, we are welcoming a partner from the California Green Business Network from EcoSlow. Um, Evelyn Barajas Perez is here to join us and um, she's gonna share her screen and tell you a little bit about what this means. Welcome. Oh, I'm muted. Hey. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Am I unmuted? You're good. Perfect. Okay. So hi everyone. I'm Evelyn. I'm a, I am EcoSlow Sustainability Coordinator. I run the Slow County Green Business Program. And in a minute, I'll explain how EcoSlow and the Green Business Program fit together. Um, I'm excited to share with you more about our local business program and uh, what we do, what it means to get certified, and how you can take the next steps to making your business the next green certified business in Slow County. Um, so what is it like, what is the Green Business Program Network? Well, it is essentially, it's a nonprofit. Oh, did I? Oh, sorry. My com I am working on two screens. Sorry, my thing is buzzing. There we go. Okay. Um, so um, what is the California Green Business Network? It's essentially, um, it's a nonprofit and it's all throughout California as the title reflects. And um, it essentially works to small and medium sized businesses to create a vibrant green economy. Green businesses like to do businesses with other um, customers and businesses that want to support sustainability. Um, and the Green Biz Program operates in cities and counties um, here in SLO specifically. We are SLO County versus in like Southern California. We have like Long Beach program. So it varies in sizes, but um, I always like to say that, you know, SLO County, we're a little, we're big but small at the same time. So I think us encompassing the whole county really does um, help with that process. Um, so, as studies show, our health is directly correlated to health of our environment, and we've seen that business, businesses often have a greater um, carbon footprint in our environment um, than you know, residential. So, we think that this is a great way to really get um, 
really support our environment and support Slow County and becoming a greener and better um, place um, that supports sustainability, which Slow already does, Slow County for the most part, and I love that. Um, now, um, going to talk about a little bit more on the program um, and how it fits with EcoSlow. Um, as of January 1st, 2020, we adopted it under EcoSlow. So what does that mean? We just thought um, as EcoSlow um, being um, the cent um, EcoSlow is the Environmental Center or San Luis Obispo for those of you who don't know, and we're also a nonprofit. And so we just found it to be a perfect fit. Um, the Slow County, pro the Green Business Slow County program was actually under Cuesta for a little bit, and that's when it got switched over. Um, and so as you can see with the timing, we had um, the program for two months until COVID hit. And so um, it's been an interesting um, switch in which before we go in person for a lot of this program um, and taking it virtually. Um, and if you want to know more about EcoSo, because we do a lot more things than just, you know, my section, which is the Green Business Program, feel free to go onto the website and we talk, um, we have volunteer programs and such, everything um, correlating with, um, you know, COVID safety and everything. Um, we've switched over, for example, for a while we were doing um, cleanup kits in which people could clean up, get a kit and go into their neighborhood and clean their neighborhoods. Right now that's not happening, but that was just an example of how we're still trying to um, be, um, involve the community, but keep safety in mind. So why become a certified business? Um, often when I bring up to get certified, uh, some bu businesses are like, so why should I get certified? Well, in general, um, especially I believe in Slow County, the mark there's a marketing edge over the competition because you're showing that you care about the environment, especially um, protecting here in Slow County. We have such a beautiful like open space that um, I, a lot of people that have gotten the certification, they say that when people find out that they're certified, they get a lot of um, positive feedback. Also, what a lot of people don't know is that a lot of businesses will save money because they're switching things over, updating certain appliances, saving on electricity and water. Um, things that I think at times, like you're running a business is not top of mind, because especially now with COVID. Um, also, um, we've gotten feedback that um, a lot of employees really like that their businesses are taking that initiative to be more sustainable. And in general, it's good for the environment and you get recognized and it's free. So um, all our services are free. The only thing that costs money is if like, let's say you need to do an update, um, that does come out and like you would have to make that purchase. That being said, we also have rebate programs. Um, and one of them being $500 rebate. So let's say you need to make a, um, a whole bunch of appliance purchases because a lot of your appliances are um, out, outdated. That's, we have a rebate program. That being said, the rebate program has its limitations in terms of there's only a limited quantity. And so um, that really, we always try to encourage people, like if you can sign up now, try to sign up and get through. Um, some of the pillars, and I'll get into what pillars are, and that will qualify you to get that $500 rebate before they're all gone. Um, so let's talk about how many are certified. So currently we have 29 certified businesses in Slow County, which us being um, newer to the, um, to the area here, I am so proud of. And here's just a list of them. And as you can tell, like we have um, Wilbur Kombucha. We just have a lot of areas covered right now. Um, we are trying to expand to North and Southern County more since you can tell on the map that there's a, um, a lot in Slow City. Um, that being said, we're still trying to get a lot of people in Slow, um, Slow City proper to get certified as well. So it's been in, um, a journey and it's so exciting to see businesses get certified. Now, these are just some of our cer um, certified 
businesses, Soco Health and Wellness, Solarponics, and Wellbird Kombucha. Now, if you want to see what um, the online directory, just go to greenbusinesscalifornia.org and they'll give you a list. And in, the, um, in a little bit, I'll show you another way to, act, to know what green businesses are, where are they? Let's say you're traveling and you're like, I really want to go to a restaurant that is certified. Um, then there's a way to do that. We have an app. I'll chat about that a little bit. Um, in general, in California, there's a little over 3,000 certified businesses. And so um, the map here shows you all the counties and cities that are, um, are involved, have their own um, CAGBIN program. And um, it's, I just love seeing this map and knowing that there's more than 3,000 businesses certified. Um, it just makes it seem like we're all, even though here in Slow County, we're a little smaller, um, we're just part of the bigger picture and really making a strive for difference. And so um, a lot of businesses love to chat and talk to like, so does this apply to me in my business? We, it's actually quite, it varies. So um, we cover almost all businesses types, um, auto body, office, retail, brewery, medical services. And um, so you think it, you name it, most likely we have, um, we're serving that sector. Here in Slow County, we're working on expanding our, the sectors we are hitting, um, but right now we um, have a little bit more limitation, um, but we're looking to get other businesses certified in all these um, sectors. Now, what certification measures help, do you, help for your business? So you conserve energy, reduce water use, um, commute sustainably, prevent pollution, um, we advocate to use non-toxic cleaners, so that's great for especially office spaces, and um, avoiding waste, recycling materials, all this. At the end, what we love is that people will learn that a lot of, like, for example, um, for me, I didn't really pay attention to non-toxic cleaners as much until I got into this position and I learned so much about it. So. Um, I love the educational aspect of this and how we educate businesses and people who are interested in getting certified on all these different topics. Um, so additional benefits of becoming a certified green business other than helping your environment and um, really setting a, you know, a, the stage for sustainability. Um, so you get a decal and a, cert a certificate. So this is so everyone knows that you are certified. And um, I think that really makes a difference. Um, I, for example, I'm from Southern California. So when I go down um, to visit family, I actually try to look for these green businesses um, as I'm stopping by to get food or something. And um, I love seeing the little decal. And so it just shows that you're part of a bigger um, community. Um, and going back to the app, shop. So let's say you are in a different region and you're really wanting to support um, the green business community. Um, go download Shop Green app and you plop in like, I'm looking for, I don't know, kombucha or I'm looking for pizza. In this region, um, businesses will pop up. So I think that's really cool. Um, and once you get certified, you get onto the app. And social media recognition. So EcoSlow um, itself um, loves to essentially do like a Saturday shout out and we talk about like the businesses that get certified and we really try to get the names of the businesses out there. And we also have a growing Slow Green business um, Instagram, and we're trying to grow that to be a wealth of knowledge for not only our businesses, but also um, anyone who is wanting to enroll. Um, we also have an Eco Slow Green business e-newsletter where we do tips and tricks on how to be more sustainable as a business and just also a wealth of knowledge, like any updates that we hear from, let's see, an energy facility or something, we try to put that on there. And um, future networking opportunities. So um, 
we had lots of plans in January to um, do networking events. Um, COVID happened and um, that is put on pause. Um, right now we're looking at making some more virtual events um, in supplement of that. Uh, but in the future, we really do hope to have annual celebrations because we want to celebrate that all these businesses have made a stance to be more sustainable. Um, and we are also working for virtually to do lunch and learns, in which case we have guest speakers talking about different parts of um, sustainability, whether it's like, again, using like non-toxic cleaners or like getting a little presentation from IWMA talking about recycling. That's in the works right now. but. Um, in the future, um, it will become a thing, hopefully, crossing fingers. Now, if you're interested or you're thinking of a business that it would be interested, how do you sign up? So, um, that's, it's easier than um, a lot of people, well, a lot of people get like a little flustered, like, how do I do this? It sounds complicated. Actually, it's not that um, hard. It's pretty simple. So, what you're gonna do is go onto greenbiztracker.org fill out an application. It's going to ask you some basic questions about your business. And um, again, there's no rush. Take your time. And essentially your checklist will be, um, depending on what kind of business, like a restaurant versus an office, you'll get a specialized list. Now, um, I will get a notification that you have um, signed up and I will reach out to you and say like, hey, do you need any help? Here are the rebates. And this is what you need to do to get to that point. Um, now going back to the green biz tracker, this is how it looks and this is how it looks to the person who's applying. And as you can tell on the side when I mentioned pillars earlier, these are our pillars, energy pollution, prevention, solid waste, transportation, wastewater and water and community. And a lot of people do get a little overwhelmed. I've heard businesses like that's a lot on the list. I'm like, don't worry, we're here to help. Um, between me and my intern Lauren, we love to help and set up a meeting and really go through the process with you so you don't feel like it's overwhelmed. It's almost overwhelming. Now, again, going back to checklist, every checklist is um, specialized in which you, if you're a restaurant, you're gonna have a different checklist to an office because there's different appliances and such. And so it's catered to your business essentially and what type it is. Now, to help you along, um, we also have pillar videos to kind of chat and explain the whole process. And so that um, is under our EcoSlow YouTube channel. And so they're super easy and accessible. And third step is create your business profile. Now, congrats, it says. <laughs> now you're served by Green Business. There's more steps that entail um, and more step to go into it, but essentially it's from start to finish. I can help me Evelyn and our intern Lauren are happy to help with this whole process. Um, and I know at times it's a little daunting, but we love to help our community and that's what we're here for. And does anyone have questions about the green business program? Thank you so much, Evelyn. Um, we do have a question in the chat, which is, what is the difference between green certified business and LEED certification? Okay. Um, what's the difference between green? Sorry, I did not see the question. Um, so I don't know what LEED certification is, actually. So my um, understanding is that LEED certification is for the way that a building is built and the green business certification would be for the way that your business operates. Oh, so the, yeah. the I green know what the lead certification was, thank you for letting me know. But yeah, so the green business side is how it's run. It's whether you're using reusables in your office when you can, um, changing your toilet paper to recycled toilet paper, uh, that kind of the, in, the inside of what your business is getting run as. Right. So lead certification would be the types of materials it's constructed with, the HVAC systems, um, that kind of thing. Um, I wanna say, Evelyn, that our organization actually, I thought we had completed it, but maybe we only started the Green Business Certification Program. And this was back when um, Corey was running the program and it was tremendously educational. And I suspect that a lot of the businesses, particularly in downtown, are already operating with a lot of these principles. So it's really just a matter of um, 
getting certified. And uh, we're really happy that you're here and we'll happily share this information with our downtown businesses so that you can get some more certified businesses. Thank you. And actually, yeah, a lot of businesses that do enroll, they're like, I'm already doing most of this. I'm like, yes, you are. So let me get you certified. It's just these little things here and there, you know? And so um, I love how sustainable slow is and um, it's great. So yeah. You. And it's everything from, you know, the, the nonprofit institutions to um, the very, very commercial businesses as well. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Evelyn. Um, up next, we have Catalina Hubbard, who is going to talk to us a little bit about the Pavement to Parks program. Good morning, Catalina. How are you today? Good morning. And unfortunately, my camera, I'm having some technical difficulties this morning. But um, yeah, I just wanted to give a very quick uh, shout out to our Pavement to Parks program. We are... Um, I don't know if you guys were familiar with the first round, but we gave $300 sponsorships to businesses that had um, a parklet and wanted to improve it or businesses that didn't have a parklet and wanted to create one. So we got a lot of really, really great feedback from the community. Um, they really enjoyed the program. So we have extended it all the way to the end of the fiscal year. So you have a couple more months. If you have a parklet or you would like to create a parklet, um, you can shoot us an email and we can get you enrolled in the program. It's really easy. It's essentially you submit us receipts showing that you went to miners, you bought plants, you bought whatever else you need for your parklet and we reimburse up to $300. So super easy, just trying to support the local economy, get you guys some really awesome outdoor spaces. Great. Well, thanks so much. Um, is there a place where they can go to sign up or what's the next steps? Yeah, so I will drop my email in the chat. Um, I will also drop, we have a page on our website um, and I will drop that also where you can start the, the process of getting enrolled. So I will do that right now. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email and um, we'll get you going. Great. Thanks, Catalina. Appreciate it. All right, some more resources because um, we are all always interested in improving and uh, learning. Um, we are a member of the International Downtown Association and there is a wonderful free digital readiness workshop for small and medium sized businesses. Um, and you are absolutely able to um, join this. So Rachel will be putting um, the link for this um, up in the chat. This is part of the Grow with Google program um, that uh, we've definitely participated in workshops on before. There was a workshop at the Hot House that the city and Google and I think the TBID coordinated about a year and a half ago. Um, I pre presume that this will be a continuation of that. Um, but there's nothing wrong, wrong with another free workshop, especially about the digital space, which is changing daily. Um, so we will invite you to that, and we'll also send you out a link to that in um, our member email, which will go out tomorrow. I wanted to give a special thank, thank you to our downtown foresters. Um, I see a couple of you on the uh, call today. Stephen Landy, thanks for your work on this. And a big thanks to Cassidy for um, promoting and coordinating this day, as well as to our new partners at EcoSlow for joining us on this project. Um, our downtown foresters, Trim Trees and Mission Plaza and on Hikera Street. And I think you can really see the difference. Um, their motto is to plant, prune, and protect. And uh, if you're interested in joining and learning more about our urban forest, um, you can email Cassidy. So thanks again for that. We are also leading a call for artists. We will be doing the Mayflower Initiative again in 2021. Um, you may remember this was a really fun public art project that we did after the first shutdown in 2020. And we're bringing it back in 2021 with some exciting new activations that will be extending beyond the, um, the windows of the businesses um, and going onto um, the sidewalks and into Mission Plaza as well. So. If you are an artist or you know an artist who'd like to participate, um, please fill out our call for artist interest form. Um, we are going to be asking businesses and property owners to sign up next month. So um, stay tuned for that. And then we will pair businesses and properties with artists to really activate our windows downtown, including the vacant window spaces 
um, paint them with colorful flowers and provide some more additional activation throughout the streets and in downtown. So we're looking forward to that and we hope that we'll get a few April showers um, before those Mayflowers come because we always need some more rain. The downtown dine out program is being operated by the city of SLO and the Parks and Recreation Department. It's open 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Really fun to see folks bring their takeout to these tables and chairs. We invite you to come downtown this week. Um, will be a fun time today actually will be a great time to get some some lunch and hang out to see the flip of the pod and the tunnel and the installation of the COVID floral memorial heart. So um, check out downtown downtown downtown. And um, that brings our call to a close. We're just a little short of 11 a.m. Um, jam packed with information. We're all looking forward to seeing if we're able to progress to the red tier. Um, and that information will come out around noon tomorrow that gets announced on the state website. So um, we'll all be refreshing and we will share that information with you as soon as it becomes available. Um, any other questions or things that people would like to add? Um, there's some great information in the chat about signing up for the Green Business Program, um, a call for artists, as well as some, some interesting events and other initiatives. All right, well, um, thanks again to everybody for joining us on this Monday morning. Welcome to March. Um, and I look forward to seeing you around downtown or on screen soon. Thank you very much. Don't forget to vote for your board of directors meeting and we'll see you next Monday.